managed to get all the siding trim, all the details done around the big bay window, and started in on the main body of the building. Also did a little bit on the flooring on the inside. Well, there you have it. That's what we did this week. All right, good morning. It's Monday, and I have a little bit of a late start today. It is Indigenous Peoples Day, and my daughter was home from school, and she said, well, Dad, you know, it's a holiday, so you shouldn't have to work, and you should stay home with the family. And I said, well, Frankie needs my attention, and we need to get her done. So I need to spend as much time on Frankie as possible. And she said, yes. Well, can you at least stay for breakfast? So I did. I stayed home for breakfast. And it just so happens to be me and my wife's anniversary today. <laughs> and, you know, neither one of us remembered. <laughs> it's fine. It's just how we roll. The first line of business is to continue wrapping the building with siding. But before I get there, you got to do your trim details first. I'm going to do this one a little bit differently than I would normally do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this cavity here with trim. And we're going to go from that soffit all the way down to the edge of the flashing. And we're going to do that at all the intersections, just like we did on the very first one over here. And then that is going to make the infill for the siding way faster. It's not as, as detailed as I can go, but Frankie, her timeline, man, it's, it's getting uglier and uglier by the day. I need to find ways of making this project complete, correct, and looking good the fastest way that I know how. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Big trim, top to bottom, all the way around, and then to start infilling. So I think today we should be able to get the three corners and maybe you can start infilling. I think so. Yeah, let's do that. I just dropped my glove. <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, so this morning we're gonna start out with doing a bit of a flashing detail that really needs to happen in order to protect this front bay window. And it's a little unique. It's something I do on a normal basis when it comes to a roof intersecting a headwall. Um, but this is even more important. So let me show you what's going on. So we have this roof that we finished up last week and we have this window that's right there. So basically this is only a problem during the spring thaw, but when snow collects here and it melts off, it's gonna shed right towards this window. And in last week's episode, we did see how splashback from this upper roof did splash onto this window and we'll correct that with gutters. But for this one, time of year when the rain could or not rain but the snow melt could come down here and land on the the trim work and or the window we're gonna put this little guy in just like that so that it deflects the water away from now I have the white side out because when you look at this you're gonna see it from inside of the window so I want the color side going that way so we'll get that snaked in there after I finish putting this trim detail in. Here's the finished product with the wall here, the roof here, 
the water can come down here, hit this flashing. When it does so, it'll hit this little backsplash here and the water will redirect out to the leading edge and stay away from the trim. And what little snow makes it back there won't make a bit of difference. There is an air gap underneath the trim itself. So if any little bit of water gets in there, it'll drain out. And the bottom side of the trim is all stained and so is the back side. So this little task is all set. Good morning. It is Wednesday. Yep, it's Wednesday. So today, it's gonna to be a busy day, mainly because we have bad weather coming and I wanna spend as much time I can out here getting this prepped up as far as I can. So, with that said, the only sections I have left above the bay windows here are just these little sections here and here and one on the other side. We'll get that sided out and then that will be finished. I have Last night, I finished up the siding above this little roof. So that's all finished. And now, if I can get this section above the bay window finished, then I should be able to move right into the soffits. Let me show you what's going on with those. So you can see that faux wood paneling that I have tacked up there. Well, that's there because of raccoons, honestly. So the raccoons were moving in, or had already moved in before I purchased the property. And so I had a evict them. And they took their eviction notice, you know, like champs. They moved right along. That left these giant holes in the soffits that I just took the paneling from inside that I had to rip out anyway, and tacked it up there to cover up the holes. So today's mission will be to get the all that torn apart, repair any other damage, and rebuild those with just plywood. We're gonna keep it simple on this one. You know, normally I like to do tongue and groove with recessed lighting and all that fancy stuff, but nope, not on this one. Man, that tree is still just absolutely beautiful. All right, well, I'm gonna knock out this siding up above that window, and we can get going on this thing. Well, we're rearing the end of the day and I'm determined <laughs> to just get as far as I can. Um, really running out of steam here. But yeah, anyway, you see on this lower roof, I had replaced the fascia boards on it, you know, back when we replaced the roof. And I had to go, you know, take care of business by taking care of some customers. So I never got around to doing the fascia board on the upper roof. Well, it's about darn time. So I've got my pick way up here, nice and high, so I can get up here, thanks to Tom, my neighbor, helping me getting this thing up here. And 
I can do just about everything by myself. But certain things, like this, lifting this giant pick, it is just hard. So I'm grateful to have help where I can. Last time it was the septic guy, this time it was Tom. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna get to putting this on and hopefully I can get out of here at a reasonable time tonight. So last night was a late night and honestly, I don't think I've got a late night in me again. So, yeah. Oh, goodness, sorry. Yeah, stop talking, start working. Okay. Well, working as tired as I am, has caused me a problem. As you saw, I tried to get the fish board up in there. Well, it didn't go because I didn't remember to check for the nails that go through the sheathing into the fascia board. So, I've got all those bent out of the way and now I should be able to get this going. Let's try it again. Even with it super cloudy like this, there's still so much beauty in this area. This is really, and I'm even saying this at the end of a day, I'm completely exhausted and I'm still taking a moment to just enjoy this area. Man, I love this time of year. So this morning, it is a lot nicer than they were expecting. It's supposed to rain all day. So I'm a little itchy. I want to get back onto the soffits. And according to the weather forecast on the hourly, it looks like, you know, like mid afternoon before it really starts raining. So if I can get to the lumber yard, get the other piece of fascia that I need and get that installed, then I can get the rest of the fascias fixed. I might be able to get that project finished before the rains really start to come. And because tonight it's going to rain hard. It's supposed to get one to two inches in the overnight of rain, not snow. So it'd be really nice to have that buttoned up. Well, the winds, it'd be hard to work with the plywood. But I think I can do it. So as you just saw, I just did a real quick coat of paint on that board there. Because this is the only opportunity before it's hung to get any paint on it. Well, at least on the hidden surfaces that you'd never see again. So I'm gonna make sure those got painted. And to fill this little gap above me, I already have a piece that's already painted because back when I did the original roof, I painted up all the boards that I thought I needed to do this whole job. Well, obviously I needed another one there. But as I was looking at it this morning, do you see these right here? You know what those are? Yeah raccoon prints so where i was storing this in the crawl space those little buggers got in there maybe they didn't take their eviction notices i thought they did do a little investigating in that and make sure they're not there because this has been down there for <laughs> it's been a long time they very well could be gone again all right let's get this hung push was pretty decent. I was able to get the soffits completely rebuilt and they're set to go. I just need to get the vents installed. I did manage to paint them as well. So that's all set. Uh, but the rain really started to come down and honestly I was hungry. 
So I came in, had my lunch, and then I just had to run to the bank and deal with something over there. Um, not good, but fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, so I've been driven inside, and honestly, the biggest thing that I really need to take care of, which has been really bugging me, is the fact that this place is a hot mess. I mean, I've got cutoffs here, I've got cutoffs over there, I've got cutoffs over there, and then there's tools scattered about, you know, taking on different tasks and just trying to knock out stuff as fast as I can. <sighs> so I think this afternoon, to help cleanse the mind and make things easier on me, I'm just gonna clean. I'm just gonna clean and organize put everything back where it belongs and load up the dump trailer and crank up some music and just just work. Just be a worker bee for the rest of the afternoon. Sometimes it's important to do that. Just be a worker bee. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Worker bee. So back in 2020, Back in 2020, <laughs> uh, I pulled all the floors out of this place and just kept digging and digging and digging until I found the original floor. For today, I, I've i got about an hour and a half left to kill before the end of the day, I think. Maybe an hour now. But I wanted something to do as a filler and peeling this linoleum off was just brutal back then. I, I got it up in most areas, but this one area here, it just did not want to come up. Man, I tried everything. A chipping hammer, uh, just a regular putty knife and scraping it. I did, I used a big butane torch or propane torch. Yeah, propane torch. And I tried heating it up and peeling it off. And that didn't work. I ended up just catching the floor on fire. And yeah, I... I tried everything. I even tried scraping this on the coldest day of the year to see if that helped it. And then I tried using a torch on top of that to see if it helped it. Nope. Nothing I tried. And then I had to do an epoxy floor. And I wanted to smooth out the epoxy floor. And I came across this little guy here. And this is called a Dima brush. It attaches to your grinder, right? It has little replaceable blades. It's a really, really neat setup. And so after I did that epoxy floor, I brought this grinder up here and I tried it. And sure enough, man, it works pretty slick. It's loud, it's super dusty, and not the easiest thing in the world, but it does pull it up. And yeah, so that's what we're going to do for the next hour, is just grind on this. Why not, right? Thirty-nine minutes and fifty-four seconds. Call it fifty-five seconds. Let's call it 40, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Let's grind this all up. It's not too bad. Well, good news for today is that the rains last night did not strip all the trees of the leaves and it's still really beautiful around here. I am, I, I can't stop saying it. I love this time of year. Anyway, so we have a clear day, it looks like. So we should be able to stay outside all day. Uh, right, and it's Friday. It's Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, what? No, sorry. <laughs> uh, right, so yesterday I did manage to get all the soffits fi finished except for putting the vents on. So we'll start there this morning and then go to uh, the frost boards and then corner boards and then trim the window that's behind me and we'll see where we're at. I mean, that's a fair bit right there, but uh, we'll start there.
Yeah. And obviously it did rain pretty hard last night. And recently, everything is still dripping. In fact, <laughs> yeah, it's a wet one. So I've decided to start out by painting this morning, actually. A little change of plan. But if I can get a second coat on the fascias, no, no, fascias, the other thing, soffit, yeah. Then when I hang the, the vent strips, then I don't have to worry about cutting in next to the vent strips. Not like it really matters up there. Nobody ever looks at soffits. Well, not entirely true, but you know what I mean. All the things to look at in front of this building, it's gonna be the last thing, but it's still an opportunity. My problem is, you know, everything I own is used. So there's a bunch of paint buildup on this. Went ahead and just sanded that off. Now I'll squirt a little bit of WD-40 in here. Because when painting, nothing's more irritating than a roller that sticks. So throw a little bit of WD in there. Work that in. So it's two o'clock and I'm still painting. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the underside's painted, all the vents are hung, and this little flashing detail over here is sorted out. Got that taken care of, got the frost board in up here, and at least the first section of it. And now we're gonna paint the fascia. And you know, when I went to the lumber yard to get the paint, I I was asked, what shade of white do you want? And I said, white. I just want white. Can I get white? <laughs> and he said, well, you really gotta, you gotta pick a different, sh an actual shade so we can put a code in to put it in the machine. So I went over and I had to pick a shade of white. And so I just read the names, honestly. I didn't bother looking. I looked at the names and picked it by that. And I, I'll give you a minute to try to figure it out. I'm gonna, I'll give you some clues here while I'm working. <laughs> See if you can figure out the name of this shade of white. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be ridiculous. All right, the big bapa speaking. What? <laughs> With a what? Oh, baby, you know what I like. Gentilly lace has a pretty face, ponytail coming down, a wiggle and a walk and a giggle and a talk. Made the world go round. Nothing in the world like a big eyed girl. And that's so funny, they spend my money. Be real loose like a long necked goose. Oh, baby, that's a what I like. Chantilly Lace has a pretty face and a ponytail hanging down. A wiggle and a walk and a giggle and a talk. Made the world go round, round, round. Nothing in the world like a big eyed girl. That's so funny, make me spend my money. Be real loose like a long necked goose. Oh, baby, that's a what I like. Will I what? Oh, baby, you know what I like. Chantilly Lace has a pretty face, ponytail hanging down, a wiggle and a walk and a giggle and a talk. Made the world go round. Nothing in the world like a big eyed girl. Make you act so funny, make you spend my money. They will loose like a long necked goose. Oh, baby, that's a what I like. Got paint on my suspenders. That's not right. Crisis. Crisis mode. What's that, honey? Pick you up at eight. And don't be late. But, baby, I ain't got no money, honey. Gonna talk. Make the world go round. 
Nothing in the world like a big eyed girl. So fun to make me spend my money. And this segment was brought to you by Benjamin Moore and their unique way of naming products. <laughs> not really. Uh, yeah, I'm not sponsored. But uh, it, it was fun picking this and then having that song instantly pop in my head. So if you are interested to know what the name of this product is and the code for it, I'll share at the very end of the video. You know where I like to put random things? And yeah, now it's time to get on to the next thing, which I believe is tearing some corner bead off and a little bit of siding and then maybe even make the new corner bead? Yeah, let's go do that. All right, we're gonna wrap up Friday right here. It's a good place to stop. I've got a bunch of cleanup to do for the end of the week and um, still gotta record, you know, bits and bobs for the video. So, yeah, this is where we're gonna start up next week. As you saw, we did a little bit of flooring work this week because that's really the next big project for the interior of the home is to get, well, the flooring plan really sort of solidified. My goal is to be able to repurpose this original oak floor to where it surrounds the fireplace. And if you've been watching the channel, this, the fireplace is a central, central feature of the main open living space. And I want to surround the whole thing with the original 130 year old oak. Now I've been harvesting it from different rooms as I've been demoing and you know doing all that. The primary suite still has a bunch of it in it. So I'll be able to rip all that out. And yeah, oh, I came across someone who had pulled a whole bunch of these, this old flooring out of an 1880s house. So a little bit older than this one and I denailed it and saved it and I have it stacked at home waiting for a project and I think this is that project. So we'll surround the fireplace and if we have enough, I'd like to go down the staircase with it. That'd be pretty slick, but that can't happen until sheetrock is up. So yeah, we don't know what's going on there yet. Well, we supposedly do. <laughs> I don't know. It's so hard to say anymore. But I'm just gonna keep plugging along and we're gonna just keep working, you know, cause next week, chances are it's gonna rain all week. At least that's what they're guessing at this point. So, you know, if it does, we'll be inside ripping floors apart and piecing them back together, or we'll be back outside doing more siding. Either way, I have plenty, <laughs> plenty to do. All right. I appreciate all of you and thank you so much for watching and stopping by Hyde Peaks Home. Oh, if you wanted to see the paint, hold on, paint. Chantilly lace had a pretty face and a ponytail a hanging down, a wiggle and a walk and a giggle and a talk Makes the world go round Nothing in the world like a big-eyed girl And act so funny, make me spend my money <laughs> All right, there she is, Benjamin Moore, Chantilly Lace Code number 2121-70